performance review of the Spalding NBA Street Phantom Rubber Outdoor Basketball. Welcome back to Street Ball Strategies. I try to speak my mind, but I choke. I'm on the tightrope. Tired, I can't cope. No lying, no hope. The lion might show up to the party. Y'all don't want smoke. Energize the body. So very interesting about the performance of this ball. This ball has a unique and steep learning curve. And if this were a leather ball, I wouldn't be surprised. Even a composite leather ball that needs to be broken in a little bit. But this ball, has a learning curve that is steeper than anything I've ever seen with a rubber outdoor basketball. And before I explain, let me make it clear that this ball is not overinflated. It's gonna sound, my explanation is gonna sound like this ball is overinflated, but it's not. Just to do a basic drop test, if, if this ball was overinflated, it would bounce much more than that if there was too much air in this ball. Overinflation is not this ball's problem. So a scale of one to 10, and on this scale we're talking about mostly dribbling because it's the most noticeable, but also shooting and layups. Also we're referring to power, strength, speed on this scale of one to 10. So if you're just casually dribbling this ball, if you're just casually dribbling, you have no power, no strength, no speed. It's just as casual as you can possibly be. That would be a number one but if you're dribbling as fast and hard as you possibly can that would be a number 10 same thing with shooting and layups as well on an average ball say if you dribble at a number three then because you're an experienced basketball player you would know that dribbling at a number three you, the ball would react it would come off the ground uh, as a number three as you would expect even if the ball was overinflated, if you dribble at a three, maybe the ball gives you a four. Uh, if you dribble at a four, maybe the ball gives you a five because it's overinflated. This ball is not overinflated and this ball does not do that. The learning curve with this ball comes in the form of the more energy you put into this ball, you get exponentially more energy back. So with any ball, just physics is the harder you dribble the ball, the harder it comes back to you. But with this ball, you get exponentially more energy back out of this ball. So what I mean is, if you dribble this ball at a one, you get like a one and a half. It's not really that noticeable at one. If you dribble at two, you definitely get a three coming back from this ball. And then from there, that's when the learning curve comes. That's when the exponential power back comes into play. So now if you dribble at a three, you're getting at least a five back out of this ball. If you dribble at a four, now you're up around seven. And five would give you at least eight and so on and so on. So the more energy you put into this ball, you get exponentially more back. Not as much as you expect, not as much as is normal, but more, exponentially more. I don't know how or why this ball does that, but it is the only one I've ever experienced, especially rubber, that has such a extreme learning curve to it. So the question is, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Well, obviously it's gonna come down to your own subjective opinion, but I will say that if you're the kind of player who requires a super reactive ball, like if you're a point guard who pushes the offense really hard, if you push a lot of fast breaks and a uh, good reactive ball is what you're looking for, then this may be a dream basketball for you. However, if you're a finesse player, if finesse is what your game is built around, then you may have major problems with learning this ball because this ball demands constant 100% of the time precision. What I'm talking about is ideally as players, every time we dribble or shoot or whatever it may be, ideally we would put the exact amount of strength and energy, power, speed that we intend behind every shot. We would get that right every single time. But it happens way more than not when you're dribbling that you dribble harder than you intend to accidentally. For example, even me after like two weeks of working with this ball every day, just dribbling by myself, drilling with this ball. If I dribble harder than I intend to, I could very well end up 
fumbling this basketball. But like with a normal average basketball, if you intend to dribble at a five, but you accidentally dribble at a six, it's not a big deal. Even if the ball was overinflated, it's not a big deal. With this ball, the higher you go on that scale when you get into the fives, sixes, sevens, when you get up that high, the jump between the scales exponentially becomes so much more that it's easy to lose your dribble if you accidentally dribble one step higher than you intend to. So yes, there is a very steep, long learning curve for this ball, but there is one possible major caveat that may make this ball well worth putting in the work to master this ball. Put your feet on the ground, look around, it's the siege and we back in your town, burning it down. You've been waiting too long for the sound, time is now, got you hanging on every single word, verb and now. Uh, give you what you been waiting for now, what you praying for, this the type of we slaving for. That caveat is that if you actually master this ball, because using this ball is so unique, the performance, the bounce, the reactivity of this ball is so unique, that if you show up to the park and you're the only one that not only knows how to use this ball, but you mastered how to use this ball, then that could possibly give you a potential major advantage out here at the park. Not only that, but as I said in my first impressions video, this ball just feels so amazing for an outdoor rubber basketball. It is the best feeling outdoor rubber basketball I've ever felt. So if you show up to the park with this ball and other players feel it, they're gonna wanna use it and play with it. And then you're gonna be the only one that actually knows how to use this ball. Now I don't recommend that you do that because it is kind of like a parlor trick and it's all dependent on this ball. If you don't have this ball, your whole game may fall apart without it if you have to use someone else's ball. But if you're into that, if you wanna try that, I wouldn't blame you for trying to master this ball in order to use it as a weapon against players out here on the court. So here's the deal, for me, being the casual, retired player that I am, the learning curve on this ball is just too steep for me to try to go ahead and put in the time and effort to master it. Because again, we're not only talking about dribbling, we're also talking about shooting and layups. So for example, when I was talking about needed precision for this ball, when you take a jumper, if you know you have to make an adjustment mid jump shot, because you jumped wrong or were off balance or something is wrong with that jumper and you realize it mid jump shot and now you have to adjust in some way. Part of that adjustment is you have to think to yourself, can I adjust enough to make this shot? If I can't, now what do I do in terms of snapping my wrist for the jump shot? The harder you snap your wrist, the more crisp it is the more energy you're going to be putting behind the ball the more energy you put behind this ball the more energy exponentially is going to come off the rim or the backboard or whatever creates the rebound it's not just like an average normal ball where you get just as much energy off of the ball as you put into the ball no you get more with this ball and you that's something that lives in the back of your mind when you're taking jumpers when you're taking layups and in order to get used to that to break this ball in to master this ball it's going to take weeks if not months to really be able to master how to use this ball and for me being the very casual player that i am nowadays i'm just not up for doing that for me i think i'm going to use it more of as a training ball so if i'm training or drilling stuff where I need a very reactive ball for like if I want to get really precise about my dribbling or if I want to work on uh, reactive rebounding I would definitely use this ball but I don't think it's going to be come my go-to game ball. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, if you think it's going to help you decide whether or not you're going to give this ball a try, 
then that's great. A thumbs up would really help me out. And if you could subscribe to the channel, that's a big deal for me. That really does help this channel to grow. So subscribing really helps and I really do appreciate it. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell because in the future there is going to be a direct comparison video between the Spalding MBA Street Phantom to the regular, normal, standard Spalding MBA Street Ball. So make sure you hit that bell so you're notified of when that and all of the other videos come out. And until then, I will see you guys next week. Right. This half fear where you get to the commas.